and welcome back to the channel of nonsense. Now today's video is obviously about the Lamborghini Urus. Hopefully you got that from the thumbnail and title, otherwise I'm doing a terrible job. Now obviously this is Lamborghini's first modern SUV. In the past they've done one, the LM002, so beloved of Saddam Hussein's brother, but this is a much more modern thing. Obviously it's bang up to date and it's designed for people like me. People who like driving, like going fast, like noisy in your face stuff, but have unfortunately had children. So I'm going to be doing a kind of family review of this, show you around, uh, take the kids out in it and see if I can have some fun when I'm on my own as well. Let's get cracking. Yes, it's the Lamborghini Urus, a car that joined us back in 2017. I say it's a car for people like me. It's a car for people who are far more successful than me because this costs £160,000 before options. This one right here is about £234,000 after options, after tax as well. Now, Urus is unsurprisingly another word for a bull. And it is a bit like some that Lamborghini has a thesaurus of cattle and they just pick whichever vaguely bull named thing they want to name their car after. But just look at it. It's magnificent. Anyway, I'm going to rattle through some of the options and I need the iPhone for that because there are a lot. So I'm just going to pull out some of the highlights. The yellow paint, six and a half thousand pounds. 22 inch diamond cut wheels, which are very lovely. They're also very three and a half thousand pounds. You can actually get 23s on this, so you can go an inch bigger, which might help. Who knows? Anyway, um, lower carbon packs. That's all the carbon round here and at the back, which we'll get to in a minute. Nine thousand nine hundred pounds, which is quite a lot of money. And there's an upper carbon pack, which is things like the mirror caps, five and a half thousand pounds. There's lots of thousands of pounds. Now, all those prices are before tax. So, yeah, it's not cheap, but it's pretty much the world's fastest SUV. I think the new Bentayga speed beats it by one mile an hour. But yeah, 190 mile an hour car this. And let's look under the bonnet and find out how and why it's so fast. In opening the bonnet to film this bit, I have discovered that the flies like the yellow paintwork nearly as much as every child I've driven this past. Uh, not in a weird way. Anyway, it's powered by turbocharged 4 litre V8, the Volkswagen Group staple of fast things. Here, it's got 650 horsepower though and 850 newton meters of torque, which is good for a 0 to 62 time of 3.6 seconds, which is ridiculous for a big 2.2 ton SUV. Now, this is the most fuel efficient Lamborghini ever made. Yes, it gets 22 mpg thanks to cylinder deactivation and a host of other clever technology. It's got an 85 litre fuel tank, so you'll get about 400 miles to a tank of petrol, but that 400 miles will cost about 100 and a bit quid. Now, like every Lamborghini engine, it's got the firing order on a little plaque there, or should I say the Ordine de Ascensione, which is almost certainly a pizza, the way I've said it. But anyway, it's a good thing. It's just not a V10 or a V12, but naturally aspirated engines in big heavy cars don't work. That's why we've got this. Now, I think we're all grown-ups. We know how the Volkswagen Group works, sharing bits and bobs. Now, this is on the same platform as the Bentayga by Bentley, the Audi RS Q8 and the Porsche KM. But none of those cars has anything like as swoopy a roofline as this. It looks absolutely awesome. There's loads of clever stuff going on underneath as well. It's on adaptive active air suspension. It's got the active 48 volt anti-roll bar system, so it can either tighten up to kind of keep it flat in corners or slacken off when you're going down bumpy roads or off-roading. And this has got off-road modes for a couple of hundred extra quid. It's also got four-wheel steering, which as we know, helps it go around tighter corners in town and be more stable at high speeds. And actually gives it a virtual wheelbase that's shorter than a Huracan. So it's quite a nimble thing. And Lamborghini has thrown the kitchen sink at this to make it as agile as possible, which we will come on to in the driving bit. But first, let's look at the bum. Oh, have you seen the massive brakes? They were the world's biggest carbon ceramic brakes when this came out. Not sure they are anymore, but they're still whoppers. Now under here between the back wheels is an active rear differential and there's a torque sensing middle one as well for 
more agility maybe skids i don't think it's actually that skiddy a car but there we go and that rear tire i've just looked up on the internet 450 pounds or you can get a p0 corsa the track tire which is also homologated for this for 550 pounds for a single tire anyway the boot is 616 liters flip the back seats down and it's 1600 i've had buggies in here i've had all my kids stuff and it's fitted so this is a legit family car the only thing that slightly irks me is the completely solid very nice leather clad and stitched parcel shelf i don't know what the italian word for parcel shelf is but i'm sure it's hilarious uh, i just wish this was just a roll away one i know they're trying to be posh and everything there's not really any space under there for it. There's just higher inflation kits. Obviously, you don't get a spare wheel. Uh, lots of lovely, lovely carbon fiber, including this kind of rear diffuser element, which you can put your hand through if you've got skinny hands. It's quite a cool thing. Uh, let's see if I can get this back. Dear viewer, I just told a lie. You can't actually flip the rear seats in this one down because it's got the two seat package. So I've got a big carbon fiber center console here with cubby holes and stuff, but you can obviously just get it with a normal bench seat, in which case you can flip the seats down. I've got a little screen here for the heated rear seats and all that kind of stuff. And the things which I've taken off because I don't trust my children are the rear seat entertainment units, which just slot in like that this is great i can check the oil level of the engine from the back seats that's really important isn't it uh, luckily it's okay and i can see the sat nav see how much further i've gotten my trip into nothingness and you can download apps from the google play store obviously they're well within foot range of toddlers so i've taken them off which is quite nice i'm glad they're not like hardwired in you just pull these clips fold them away and put them in the not felt lined door pockets my Skoda has felt line door pockets. Anyway, things back here are actually reasonably okay. I've got about a centimeter of headroom. I've got loads of knee room. It's roomy enough and the seats are quite huggy and electrically adjustable as well. So they're really, really nice seats for rear seats as far as they go. Um, I've got a little vent here on the B pillar, which I need because I'm getting a bit sweaty. It's just quite nice, but I would just caution about this because when you shut the back door, the view out is quite small. This bit's quite high. So if you've got kids who get car sick, they need to be able to see over this, which is quite high. Consumer advice. If you thought the outside of this car looked pretty outrageous, then the interior is just a match. And Lamborghini has done it pretty damn well. Everything is cool, beautiful to touch. Carbon fiber everywhere, which is an option. It's the big carbon pack, which is quite a lot of money and I've got a thumping four and a half grand Baz and Wilkins 3D sound system. But the steering wheel is recognizable from the Volkswagen Group, let's say that. It's got lovely Lamborghini specific shift paddles, which are metal, yes. It's just really nice. It feels like you're surrounded and cocooned in a cockpit and there aren't any ergonomic disasters. Everything is logically laid out. It's easy to use. It's, as I've said, nicely made. One little quibble with the build quality is these little silver bits in between these buttons here. They're really creaky side to side, but everything else is pretty lovely. The infotainment system is basically Audi's latest version, except it doesn't have wireless CarPlay or Android Auto. You have to plug in to get that. You've got a wireless charging mat under here, gets points for that. It did take me a while to work out how to get it into gear, which is a bit embarrassing because there's a big thing here which has reverse. You pull it back like that to go into reverse. To get it into drive, you put your foot on the brake and pull a paddle. I don't think there's another way unless I'm being incredibly stupid, which is possible. You've got the anima selector here, and actually there's an Italian word for this, which I've written down. This is the driving mode selector. It is called the Tamburo. Tamburo. So yeah, you've got Strada, which is road, Sport, Corsa, which is track, and then you've got three off-road modes, basically gravel, mud, and snow. Sabia, terra, neve, something like that. Uh, you can only pull this back, so you have to go all the way through them to get back to the road mode. Oh, I was getting very confused. I thought my camera was moving, but it's the car's ride height changing, depending on the driving mode. So in Sport and Corsa, it drops 15 mil, and in any of the off-road ones, it jacks the car up by 40 millimeters for more ground clearance on the air suspension. On this side, you've got a similar little handle called Ego, or Ego, if you're British, I think it's Ego, and that is individual mode. So you can select between different drivetrain modes, different steering weights, and different suspension modes, which is great, and I've changed the ride height again. Sorry, I'm probably 
be going up in the camera frame. Uh, that's quite useful, but the noise of this car, and it's got no craft pitch exhaust, is blooming loud in sport mode. You can't set it to be loud in a soft mode. <laughs> So you have to put it in one of the sporty drivetrain settings to be loud, which, I don't know, sometimes I like to be comfy and loud. I mean, look at me. But yeah, that's a, that's a minor quibble. Let's go for a drive, starting taking my daughter to nursery, because, you know, Lamborghini life. The first thing you need to know about Lamborghini Urus is obviously it's designed for people who have families and just want a bigger car, but still the chaos of a Lamborghini. So here I am. It's a rainy morning. I'm doing the nursery run with my most precious treasure in the back. Now, I know you don't really care about my opinion in cars and things in general, life. The most important opinion in this car is that of my two-year-old daughter. So, do you like the yellow car? Uh. What do you think of it? Is it good? Do you like the yellow car? Is it poo? This is a yellow car. You like the yellow car? Okay, there we go, we have it. My daughter likes the yellow car. Oh, right, I survived the nursery run just about intact. A few beard bows, but nothing unusual. Uh, I love having girls, it's great. The Urus fires up with quite an explosive growl and rattle. And if you put it in sport mode, it's even louder. Into gear with a pull of the paddle, and we're away. Now I'm going to very quickly talk about the boring, comfortable stuff because this does that really, really well. Let's put it back in strada mode. Click, 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 because you can't go up through the driving selector mode. But anyway, um, on a bumpy road is really comfortable, like impressively comfortable. It's not quite Bentayga plush, but honestly, it's not far off, which is mad considering how tied down it is in the sporty modes, which we'll get to in a minute. Visibility, big mirrors, great, windows good. The view out the back is a bit tank-like, so in the rear view mirror you've got the two individual rear seats in this one, which is an option as I've said, and they block quite a bit of the back window, but you know, details and the C-pillars are really quite thick thanks to that swooping roofline, so yeah, visibility over your shoulders isn't all that great at the very back of the car but otherwise it's easy to drive around town. The four wheel steering is really helpful, getting into and out of parking spaces. And you don't have any of that embarrassment of being the person that's driving a bright yellow Lamborghini and making a Horlix of a simple parking operation, which is good. The view in the mirrors is quite nice as well because you can see the punched out rear arches to remind you that you're in something a little bit silly. Let's get up to motorway speeds in a minute and we'll talk about that very briefly before doing the silly stuff. Okay, let's gently build up to motorway speeds now and see how it feels 70 miles an hour. Is it quiet? Is it cultured? Does it feel genteel? Um, yeah, yeah, it does actually. There's a bit more road noise than, you know, in things like the Bentayga and the Q7. A bit of wind noise off the big mirrors, but to be honest, it's fine, it's pretty much fine. It's mostly the tire rumble that you're getting. I've got the suspension set to smooth in my personalized mode. And it's all right, you've got big head up display to show the speed limit and the speed you're doing, along with sat nav directions, all that kind of stuff. You could do big, big miles in this. Let's talk about fuel economy, a bit boring. I said 22 is what it gets on paper. In the two and a half thousand miles this press car has had, it's averaged 15 mpg. That's a little bit unfair because chances are it's going to have been driven like by lunatics, such as that man who has modified a 3 Series Grand Touring. But yeah, I think on a run you'll easily get 20 mpg out of this. But you don't buy a Lamborghini and worry about the petrol, do you? Maybe you do as a family one. Okay, picture the scene. The kids are dropped off at nursery, but oh no, you've left Eugenie's teddy bear at home on your pile of super yacht catalogs. You need to get home quick. Launch control. Oh, oh. Mm, that's aggressive. That is very quick. I'm in 
Corsa, which is a slightly racier track mode. And when you put it in Sport or Corsa, it does slacken the stability control off a little bit to help you get round corners. But that kicked the back out sideways ever so slightly on the very ferocious upshift into second gear. Now, obviously this is very fast, we know that, but it sounds amazing. That four liter V8 doesn't sound especially turbocharged. You get a great sound in the cabin and out the exhaust. You get proper whips and cracks and snarls from the exhaust on downshift it's a joyous joyous engine and it is absolutely thumpingly fast which is what you would want hope and expect now the handling of this car is also something to write home about it corners so flat and with so much grip i really kind of want to take it on a track which is a weird thing to say about an suv it just encourages you to drive it like a saloon car or an estate car and i think because it's got that lower roof line you feel like it's not a big top heavy suv it feels like no other suv i've driven it is remarkably sharp remarkably entertaining <laughs> not just because it makes that silly noise with the crack when you pull the paddle should talk about the gearbox briefly i suppose it's an eight speed torque converter and although it's got a very aggressive thump in the back in the sportier modes it can sometimes not be quite as quick to change gears as you might like it's not a dual clutch <laughs> but around town it shifts smoothly and in the comfier modes it just blends into the background which is what you want isn't it Right, I'm going to stick some GoPros on the outside and make some noise. This car in, in short, to drive, does the comfortable thing, does the entertaining thing, and does it feel like a Lambo? Yes, it absolutely does feel like a Lambo. And I don't just mean that in a it's noisy and sporty sort of way. Everyone looks at you. <laughs> Everyone looks at you when you're driving this. It helps that this one is bright yellow, but you can get them in more muted colors, like grays, blacks, blues, things like that. So it can blend into your life. Yet when you put your foot down, you remember why you bought it. Anyway, enough waffling about the driving. Back to you, Tim for an outro. So in conclusion, what do I think of the Lamborghini Urus? I bloody love it. It is brilliant. It has done the family job perfectly. I have no quibbles with it other than slightly limited headroom over bumps. And that's about it. The boot is big enough. The back seats are big enough. The kids like it. Um, yes, it's a family SUV and a bloody good one. Now, when you're driving on your own, it is also I think pretty much the best driving SUV you can buy it is super fast, super grippy, but entertaining. And I would actually think it actually might be quite fun on a track day. You probably shouldn't take a 2.2 ton car on a track day, but whatever. Now, this all depends on whether you can live with the looks. Obviously it's a Lamborghini, it's meant to be in your face. It's for a certain type of person, someone hip, whereas a Bentley Bentayga is obviously more hip operation. Um, but yeah, I think this is my favorite super SUV. It's just a bit more dramatic than the Bentayga, but not as luxurious. And I think it drives pretty much as well as the Aston DBX, but feels better put together. So there we have it, a really, really good car. And I think they're gonna update this soon. So God knows what they'll do with that. I would quite like one in blue. I think, because this has too many flies on it. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching this nonsense. Please like, comment, subscribe, call me nasty things in the comments, and I will see you next time when I won't be with a Lamborghini.